Yo, what is going on, you guys? It's your boy King Sanders here, and we are back with another day of sports betting. This is going to be for Monday, April 18th, slate of NBA and MLB action. I'm super excited to hop into it. We have a really great slate of both. Um, I think we have three. Yeah, we have three games in the NBA, but we have a full slate of MLB. Um, so I have one play from the Raptors and Philadelphia game, one play from the Golden State and Denver game, and then um, I do have an MLB play as well. And then we of course have our experiment that we are currently working on our public fade of the day so i'm really excited to dive into it uh, but before we do i did just want to go ahead and say that at the time of recording this video we are on the road to 7,000 subscribers so if you guys are new make sure you guys do like comment subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you guys know whenever i post um, next i did just want to go ahead and give a quick shout out here to all of our members here on the channel thank you guys so much for everything that you guys do and thank you guys so much for giving such a small channel such a big chance as i always say you truly have no idea how much it means to me. So thank you guys so much for that. Um, but let's go ahead and do a quick recap. Not bringing out the shades today. Not bringing out the shades. We still had an okay day. Um, it definitely could have been better. But we just had a couple things not fall our way. So um, let's go ahead and just recap it real quick. We had Trey Young under three and a half rebounds here versus Miami. Um, that was the only uh, um, over that Trey Young hit besides turnovers. So he hit his under in points, he hit his under in assists, he hit his under in threes, and his under in PRAs, and oh, and under in steals and under in blocks. So he hit his under in every single stat besides rebounds and turnovers. Um, so we just picked the wrong stat, unfortunately. There was two rebounds in the last minute of the first half that literally just fell into his hands. And after that, I just knew I just knew what kind of day it was going to be. So that one did not end up working out for us. I think he grabbed like six or something. Then we had Bruce Brown over 13 and a half points versus Boston. And watching this game truly let me know exactly how the Brooklyn Nets are going to be playing this offseason. Um, they are not going to be letting anyone else shoot the ball other than Kyrie Irving and uh, Kevin Durant. And then maybe a sprinkle of... Um, Seth Curry and then Andre Drummond if he gets an offensive rebound. So they are not passing the ball to Bruce Brown, not letting him get shots off. So that will that will that'll be in my mind. Excuse me, that'll be in my mind for future for future uh, games in that series. But they're just taking they're just using their stars here for the playoffs, which totally makes sense. But um, then we did have the Bucks minus three and a half um, in the first quarter versus the bulls. That one did end up working out for us. I think they won by like 11 in the first quarter or something like that. The bulls just came out so sluggish. They had a chance to actually win that game towards the end. Um, but they ended up losing by like seven, I believe. So it is what it is. But, but then we did have the tigers money line versus the Royals. That game did end up getting postponed. So nothing we can do about that, but our public fate of the day, we're on a 2 0 streak. We had the Orioles plus one and a half versus the Yankees at plus 100, and that one ended up working out for us. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, this little experiment, we are three days in and we're actually profitable. So that's pretty crazy. Um, so we're going to keep going. We're going to try it through a week and we're going to, you know, reassess and see how it goes from there. So but let's go ahead and dive into today's plays. Our first play of the day, we're going to be taking OG and Anobi. We're going to be taking his over 16 and a half points here versus Philadelphia at minus 115 odds. Now, if you look at it, he did have 20 last game, and I think that a huge part of that was because of the injuries that did happen in the game. If you guys weren't watching the game, Gary Trent Jr. and Scotty Barnes both went down with both went down with injuries, and it looks like unfortunately both of those guys are going to be doubtful for this next game. So I do believe somebody's going to have to step up, um, and I think that a lot of people are going to be looking at Fred Van Fleet and Pascal Siakam. And while I don't think that those are bad options, I do think there's a lot of value here with OG. Now, in the last seven games, the Philadelphia 76ers, they have allowed the 11th most points per game to opposing small forwards. So they really, they, they're they kind of like right in the middle, um, but they have been given up a little bit more than the average than the average team to opposing small forwards. Now, this is where, this is where the value is. Like I said, this is what made me lock this bet in. OG this year has played six games where Scotty Barnes has not been in the lineup. In those games, he has dropped 24 24, 25, 26, 21, and 36. Dude has been on an absolute mission 
when Scotty Barnes is out of the lineup. And with him being out again, I just had to kind of take it. And Gary Trent's going to be out. So, you, you know, you have two potential scorers that are going to be taken off of the roster. So it's going to have to leave someone to step up. And I think it's going to be OG today. So we're going to be taking his over. OG over 16.5 points versus Philadelphia at minus 115 odds. Our second play of the day, we're going to be taking Andrew Wiggins under one and a half threes here versus Denver at minus 105 odds. Now, Wiggins, he has played in six career playoff games in general, but he has only hit the over one time. And it was in the one time that he hit the over, he shot nearly perfect. He shot four for six from the three point line. So do I really foresee him shooting perfect from the three point line again? Eh, not really. Um, so he has only hit it over one one time in his uh, six career playoff games and versus Denver um, in the two games that they have had Steph Curry back because he did have a little bit of an injury. Um, but in the two games that they did have Steph back, he has gone under in both of them and Denver in the last seven games have allowed the seventh fewest three pointers made per game to opposing small forwards. So they don't really allow a lot of three pointers to that small forward position. And not to mention golden state, they have been playing at a super slow pace here rate here recently in their last three games they've actually played at the fourth slowest pace in the entire nba so i think that we see a ton of value here i think that this line is extremely sharp i think he's either going to finish with one or two so i'm going to be taking my chances here we're going to be riding with the under so that's going to be our second play of the day wiggins under one and a half threes here versus denver at minus 105 odds now i didn't really like anything in um the Mavericks and the Jazz game, uh, there wasn't really anything that stood out to me. I didn't want to force anything, so I decided to kind of not play in that game. So, but we do have our MLB play, so we're going to be taking the Milwaukee Brewers, minus 1.5 here versus the Pirates at plus 110 odds. Now, Eric here for the Brewers, he is going to be on the mound, and he does have a 4.3 ERA. So, like, a, you know, it's nothing too crazy, but um, he actually does have some pretty good records here versus the Pirates. Um, versus the Pirates with him on the mound as the starting pitcher. They're on a four-game win streak, and they've actually covered in two of those games. So they, he's he's been a pretty good pitcher here versus the Pirates, and he's covered this exact line in two of them, like I said. So hopefully he's able to get it done for us. And Zach Thompson for the Pirates has a 4.5 ERA this year. So nothing too crazy. It should be a pretty even matchup here. But in the last nine games, the Brewers have actually won in seven of them, and um, the Brewers have also covered in six of them. So they, they've they been really good here versus the Pirates, and I expect them to keep going with that. So that is going to be our third and final play of the day. Um, we're going to be taking the Brewers minus one and a half here versus the Pirates at plus 110 odds. Now, we have our public fade play of the day once again, and um, this one is it, it's not a super heavy favorite uh you guys will see what i'm talking about like yesterday whenever we had the um whenever we had the orioles literally 70 percent were on the yankees and we ended up fading it and ended up working out um this one's not quite as heavy but it's still it's still decent enough so we're gonna be taking the dodgers minus one and a half here versus the atlanta braves at plus 110 odds now at the time recording this video which is about 10 p.m on April 17th, which is Easter. Um, there are 668 bets in for this game, and 67% of the bets are on Atlanta. So I'm going to be taking my odds here going with the Dodgers. And not to mention the Dodgers are on a little bit of a hot streak. Hot streak. They've actually won and covered in five straight games. So hopefully they can, they can keep that momentum going and end up working out for us. So that is going to do it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so you guys know whenever I post. Um, like I said, we're on the road to 7,000 subscribers, and I can't do that without your guys' help. So make sure that you guys are subbed. Uh, but, yeah, that's going to do it for me. This is King Center signing out. Peace.